Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I need additional shop space. This is something I've been wanting for a long time and I am finally gonna do it. Uh, first thing though, I need some lumber and cutting down trees for lumber is a little different than cutting down trees just to get them down. And uh, I wanted to show you guys the process. Uh, I'm taking some big ones out, so there's a few challenges with this. So let me show you what I got going on here. So this is the first tree we're gonna look at. This is a white oak on my farm and it's got a pretty heavy lean to it. Because of that heavy lean, I choose not to do a plunge cut, which is normally what I would do if I was making lumber. We'll look at that plunge cut on the next tree, but this tree, I actually had the worst results I've ever had cutting down a tree for lumber. A log like this is gonna have some internal tensions to it, and you'll see that in your finished product. So if you were trying to make really precise things like furniture, this probably wouldn't be ideal, but this will work for what I'm doing. For the record, I've cut down many trees without using a plunge cut for lumber, and usually it goes just fine. So I'm starting with a horizontal cut. This defines the direction that it's going to fall and the bottom of the notch. And I'm doing a conventional wedge, so now I'm doing the angled cut and bringing it to a nice corner. So if this isn't making a lot of sense to you, you might want to watch my video right here. Uh, I go through all the steps on cutting down a tree, showing the hinge, the back cut, the wedge, and uh, that'll clear things up for you. Checking the corner, making sure that looks okay. Now this is from the other side, so I'm marking out the back cut and then coming in horizontal and about two inches above the first horizontal cut I did on the, on the notch side. And again, my bar won't reach all the way through. So I come to the other side of the tree and I take out just that portion up to the hinge so that I can then drop the tree while on the other side. Just making sure that I got enough. And I put a couple wedges in, probably not necessary in this leaning tree, but not going to hurt anything. And then we drop it. Just watch this thing. The trunk splits quite a ways up the log and there's a lot of tear out from the stump. There's also tear out from the log and that shows up later when I have it on the mill. Now I think it would have helped if I had plunge cut the center out, but I have a dead spot there anyway. So I'm gonna have to shorten that log. So not a problem, but Plunge cutting the center would have prevented all this, this tear out in the middle that we had. I knew it might do that. I didn't want to plunge cut it because this tree had a big lean to it and I opted for safety rather than wood preservation. So I'm split right down the middle, but look, I've got more cavities, so I'm gonna have to go up higher. Darn it. So part of the reason this tree split so bad might be because it had that dead spot in the center and it was weak to begin with, but even cutting logs off of it is difficult because of the split. I had to go even higher on the log, losing even more lumber. Let's get this log out of here and see what this thing's gonna look like on the mill.
look at how far the split went a lot further than I expected and that's a big bummer um, I'm not going to be able to get nearly as much out of this log because of that well I can tell you I've been cutting trees and sawmilling for years I've never had a butt log split out that bad look at that it just destroyed that section of the tree and over here definitely took a big chunk out of this piece so it's going to kind of mess up my my two by eights now the good news is these are only spanning just under 12 feet and they're 14 feet long so not only is this not strictly necessary uh the last two feet but it's also going to be the way it's built it's going to be overhanging another rafter so there's going to be two rafters thick along this area so i can still use that thankfully all right here's tree number two it has a slight lean right towards where i want it to go which is basically right there there's a big tree over there should miss and another one here that's uh, well away from it you certainly don't want to cut it and then have it hang in another tree uh, but i really don't think it will uh, if i really had to I would put a rope up there and go limb some of those limbs that could possibly catch, but I don't think I need to on this one. Now, I'm going to cut this one the way uh, I usually, and the way you're supposed to cut for lumber. I'm going to do a conventional wedge and back cut, but I'm going to plunge cut the center out before I do the back cut so that there's no chance of the center of the log splitting out. Now, the issue is my bar won't reach all the way across this tree. It's too wide. So I'm going to end up bringing one side, after I've plunged through, now I essentially have a hinge on one side and a hinge on the other, you guys will see. I'm gonna take one side to where I want it, and then I'll go to the other side and cut that one, and then the tree should fall. Hopefully this will work. That's a big one. So conventional wedge, close to the ground, because I'm keeping the log for lumber. And it goes okay. I have to do a little bit of revision to it, but not much. Mainly right here, I had a little overcut. Just took it to a nice corner. Okay, now I'm getting ready to start the plunge. Two inches above my original horizontal, so basically where the back cut would be. And I plunge right into the center of the tree. Let's speed this up a little bit. But once I get the plunge done, I'm going to move the saw left and right to define hinges on, the, on either side of the tree. My notch looks good, comes to a good, good corner, and you can, see, you can see that I plunged slightly higher at the level of the back cut to take out the center of that log plunge came all the way through the back which is nice it's going to make it easier to line those cuts up what I have left holding this tree up is this pretty hefty section there and then this right here now that's a flare out so you know I've cut most of the center of the log out here so I'm going to go ahead and take this side down to a hinge you know I'm going to leave a couple inches so I'm going to cut that to there and then that side's gonna be done, and then I'll go to the other side, and it will fall as I start cutting that one. This is a really cool drone shot and shows how things can get thrown back at the feller if they hit another tree. Watch how two of the trees are affected by the fall. Their limbs go with the fall initially, but then they spring back. Sometimes the limbs will survive the initial impact, but then when they spring back, they break off and come back towards the feller. This is less likely to happen with healthy limbs, but more likely with dead or dying limbs. 
nothing big comes back at me here, but if you watch the left side of the screen, you can see all the little bits that end up hitting the leaves after this tree falls. It's just a hazard that people often don't think about and you should when you're dropping trees. And that is how it's supposed to happen. Center of the log, perfect. Little hinge over here. Hinge here, I was still cutting, but the tree had enough lean, it started falling, so I, I had to stop. Wanted to get away from it. Nice looking log, look at how straight that thing is. Here's that log going on the mill. That is a really nice looking log. This log you could make furniture or anything that you want out of. Me? I'm gonna make more shop space out of it. This third tree turned out to be pretty challenging. So I need another tree to harvest, and this is the one I have chosen. And I do put some thought into this. I mean, one, you need to pick it by location. It needs to be something that I can get to and haul out of here without too much work. Um, but this tree is not perfectly straight. It has a little bit of a lean to it, but not much. And it's got this uh, kind of funny growth on the bottom. I'm not sure what that's about. See that? That is an unusual looking tree. So it's a good one to take out, especially because just a few feet from it, there's this one, which is nice and straight and looks really good. And they're crowding each other. So taking this tree out is going to help this one. And, um, you know, that's just kind of general woodlot management practices. Try to put some thought into what, which trees you're taking out. Now the base of this thing with this growth over here is way too big. So I'm gonna take a chainsaw, I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna drop it in this direction, which is where it wants to go. But that, this guy right here is a dead standing tree. And I don't want that there, that's pretty close to me. This tree could hit it, it could get pushed that way and then come back and pieces break off and fly back at me which is not what I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that guy down before I do anything over here. Right as it started to go, I noticed there was a squirrel scrambling up it and he jumped. I wonder if that, that probably showed up on camera. He tried to jump into that tree and he kind of skittered down and he, he hit the ground and then went back up. And squirrels can do that. They don't break anything when they fall like that. But uh, I still feel kind of bad, poor guy. <laughs> really like, holy shit, what the hell's going on? All right, let's get to work. This has such a broad stump that uh, this is going to be kind of challenging. I have a 28 inch bar. I uh, could use a bigger bar on something like this, but that's as big as I've got. More than three feet that dimension. So I'm going to put a really big notch in here. You know, same thing. It'll be a third of the way through the tree, but it's so wide, it's going to be well over a foot. Once I do the notch, I'm going to do the plunge cut through the notch to take the center of the tree out. Hopefully, I'll be able to plunge through to like this point so that I can match up that cut and then use that for my, my back cut. And I would like to have the hinge in place, the notch in place, have my back cut defined, but have this back here still intact so that I can basically do a plunge back cut and exit to release the tree. And then I will head in that direction. So that's the plan. You might have noticed I got a new pair of chainsaw pants here. These are not sponsored. I bought these with my own money, but I wanted to tell you about them. I am bad about wearing chaps because they're hot, they're uncomfortable. Wearing them for any length of time, I usually end up taking them off. These pants are so much more comfortable than chaps, and I can wear them all day and protect my legs. I've worn a pair of cheap chainsaw pants in the past too, and those were also really hot, heavy, and uncomfortable. 
I'm really happy with these. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but they're going to last me for many, many years, and I'm glad that I bought them. I will leave a link to them in my Amazon store, where I also have a whole list of my favorite tree working equipment. If you try to do a big notch like that, and you totally miss and have to spend a lot of time revising, don't feel bad. I was fully expecting that to happen to me here. I feel pretty fortunate that I got it good on the first try. I'm no professional logger. I've just done a lot of tree work in my life. Now, my best friend of many years is a professional. Used to do logging in the mountains and then started working like residential jobs in neighborhood, climbing trees. He's the one who taught me everything I know. And, uh, you know, I know there's some differing opinions out there, but I can tell you pretty much everything that I've put in my videos, he says is, from his perspective, is correct. Because uh, he taught me pretty much everything I know about tree work. So, yeah, his name's Peter. Hey, Peter. What I'm going to do now is plunge in and take most of the center of the tree out. And then we can start looking at the back cut. Okay, went pretty well. I got most of the tree what I could reach. I wasn't perfectly parallel, obviously, but that doesn't matter. I did come out back here, so I was able to, there's my hinge. I was able to finish this side, and I've, I've only cut to like there. That's all still intact, so there's a huge back strap still there. Now I need to get the other side and, uh, and then complete the back cut. And this sucker should come down. Fortunately, I did not come out on this side, and there's just no way I can angle it this way enough without compromising the hinge too much. So I'm just going to have to plunge, and hopefully I will be able to hit that spot. And I've marked it out. That's where I think it is. That was a funky stump, a little harder than average, but we got it. For scale, this dimension is 44 inches, which is 1.1 meters. And that's after cutting off the jo the, uh, the appendage, um, the growth, the growth, yeah. Yeah, this was my plunge cut that I did from this side going through the wedge. And then this back cut that I did blind, I was too high. I didn't meet up, but uh, it's fine. It came down. And here you can see how when you plunge through the center, you end up with two hinges, one on either side. These are about six inches long and three inches wide on this big tree. So there's our stump. 
And now you can see I've opened up the canopy so that this nicer white oak can grow some limbs in that direction, get more light and get bigger. So there you go, guys. That's how I cut down trees for lumber. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And of course, a professional logger would have their own methods and they might even be better. But, uh, you know, this works. I want to let you guys know that I'm really trying to elevate my YouTube channel to the next level. I am working on a lot of different content right now. And uh, there's going to be a lot of big, big projects on the way. I'm really kind of going for it be cool if I could make this my career. So hit that like button, tell your friends, share the video, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, look out for that, that shop build that'll be coming soon. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, look, a goose. Two of them.